Welcome to Planetary Processing. We are a multiplayer engine designed to be uncomplicated and adaptable, offering an accessible and cost-effective means specifically for indie game developers to make the multiplayer game that they've always wanted to. Now, we recently ran a workshop at Games Grand Berlin where we showcased how to set up the basics of a multiplayer game from scratch using planetary processing in less than 30 minutes. I'm going to go through that project again now and showcase how it all works. Follow along to learn how planetary processing works and for help getting started on your own project. We're going to make a simple multiplayer game where players can join, move around and interact with each other, which really are the basic building blocks of all multiplayer games. We'll do this with a game of team tag. Players all have a color and then when they interact with another player, they change its color to be the same as their own color. So now we just have to figure out how to get there. First, sign up to planetary processing. This will allow you to set up games and use our backend servers. Don't worry, it's free to use until your game is ready, at which point we charge a small fee based on how many players are actively online on your game at a time. So we need to make a game. Let's call it tag demo or something like that. Planetary processing will now set up your game with a template project, make a Git repository and give you access to our server controls. Let's just look at the template quickly before we make any changes for our game. On the map, we can see cat entities and tree entities all across our world. The cats are moving to random locations and the trees are staying where they were randomly spawned. And the server is keeping track of these entities and will update any connected player clients with what they're doing. It's important to note that in planetary processing, everything in your multiplayer world is an entity. That includes your cats and trees, but also your players and parts of your terrain that need to be interactable like doors, and even invisible behind the scenes processes like weather managers or game controllers. And they're all built off the same fundamental structure. So once you understand how one entity works, you can pretty much do anything with it. You've probably noticed that the world is divided into blocks or chunks. If you're familiar with Minecraft, you immediately know what that means. But the basic principle of it is that our server will only load what is inside of a player or a designated chunk loader entity. This is all for the sake of performance and is a vital component of any successful multiplayer game. But don't worry, we handle all the complicated netcode associated with that for you. Let's get started working on our game. There are two sides to a planetary processing game, the front end and the back end. The front end is your game client. It's for graphics and non-multiplayer parts of your game. This could be all from scratch, but more likely it will be with a game engine. Planetary processing currently is available as a plugin for Unity, Godot, Default, Love2D and Unreal. In this demo, we'll use Unity as the front end. The back end is for scripting how entities are spawned and how they work on the server when the game is running. The front end and back end will communicate by messages every game tick, and we can pretty much send any data we want as part of that message. So let's look at the back end first and figure out the logic of our game. The first step is to clone the Git repository from the planetary processing panel and get that set up. The back end is written in Lua and we have a script called init and a script for each of our entities. So let's start by getting rid of cat and tree from the template because uh, we don't need those for our game. Then the init script will need some explanation. This is run every time a chunk is loaded. So in the templates case, it spawns cats and trees, but only if the chunk is being generated for the first time. The entities will stick around after that, even if the chunks are unloaded and reloaded later. But we don't need this for example, so we clear it out. Our work will all be done in player. I'm gonna copy the code from our workshop and talk through it quickly. In init, we have code to assign the player a color, a 50-50 chance of either red or blue. This runs when the player joins the world for the first time. Then update runs every server tick. We don't need to make the player do anything from the server side, so we can leave this empty. Then message is where most of the action will happen. This is where we receive information from the front end and indeed from other entities, not that we have any of those in this example. This message is a Lua table, which contains labeled key and data pairs. So if the message comes from the client, planetary processing adds a key called client with value true. Um, and within that, then we have data. For our tag game, we're gonna add a message called tag that will be triggered when a player interacts with another player. In it, we then call the uh, get nearby entities function with a range of two units, which returns entities in order of closest to furthest. We get the first of these and send it a message called team change, and then tell this target player what team the tagging player is on. We can actually see where this goes in the same file. We're sending the message to another player entity, so it also runs on player.lua. But this time, the message isn't coming from client, it's coming from another player. So we actually get to this bottom block here, where we set the player's team to the team included in the message. Nice and easy. 
There's one last thing going on here, and that's the movement. In this block, we're just saying that if we get a message from client that contains the X and Y coordinates, then we'll move the entity to those coordinates using the um, planetary processing move commands. With these changes in place, we just need to push them and go back to our panel and click deploy. We'll reset our game two to clear out the old trees and cats. Now let's go to our front end and give ourselves some basic graphics and make sure those messages get sent properly to the back end. We need to make sure Unity has the planetary processing plugin. We can do this by going to uh, Window, Package Manager, and add package from Git URL. The Git link is available in our docs or shown here. And for our tag game then, we need to set up two things, the body and controls for our player and the bodies of other players. In planetary processing, there is a distinction between the client player and other players. Uh, the client player is what's running locally on the game engine, while other players are entities managed by the planetary processing server and being sent to the client. So let's start with our client player. As you can see, we've given it a mesh and a capsule shape, and as simple as it gets really. We've also added a reference to the planetary processing master script, which lets you connect to the back end of the game. And um, another reference to the planetary processing entity script. We just entered our game ID here as well. As a brief overview, we send messages from the player to the back end, like movement updates or tag calls in this case, by the master script. We get information back from the server through the entity script, but that's all done behind the scenes. For us, we just need to make a message call. On that note, let's get the player movement set up. We're going to do this entirely on the server side this time. So we'll make a script called player, make sure we connect to the planetary processing master in the start function, and then change the fixed update to listen for simple controls. And this really is as basic movement as you can get, uh, just moving at a fixed speed when our inputs are pressed. We calculate the new coordinates and send them off to the back end by master.message, specifying our X and Y fields. If you remember, that message will go off to the back end and we handle it by moving the entity to that location. Then that will get fed back to the client because we have the use server position ticked. So planetary processing will update the location in Unity behind the scenes. We also want to add a tag interaction. That's easy enough, we just need to make it so that when T is clicked, we use master.message with tag equals true. And that then goes off to our backend code we wrote earlier, where we handle the logic for finding nearby entities and changing teams if necessary. And that's all it is. But on the topic of changing teams, we should also add a little something to show which team we're on. And we'll do this with a new script called color change. Here, all we're doing is connecting to the entity script and getting updates from the server. If you remember, we had the team variable in player.lua, so we check data team and set the component color to red if it's red and blue if it's blue. And that's the client player set up. But remember, we also have to handle other players that we aren't controlling. So let's make a quick scene for that, and we'll set it up pretty much the same way as we did our client player. We'll make it a capsule and add the planetary processing entity script. And now we don't need to control it, so we won't add our player script to it, but we can add the color change script to it. It should work just the same as with our client player. And that's it. Now we can test this thing by launching several instances at the same time, which we'll do by build and run and get a few going. And there we are. I've loaded in alongside two other instances here. Looks like I'm blue while the other two are red. Um, so we can move around as expected, good. Uh, we didn't connect a camera, so it's best not to go too far. But if I start another instance in the background now, we should spawn another player. Ah, yeah, there we go, blue. Now let's see if our tag interaction works. If I move our original player over to this red one and press T, great, we change the color. Now while all these instances are currently running on my computer, it doesn't have to be. I could send a build off to anywhere in the world and they could connect just as easily. And really that's a simple multiplayer game working in no time at all. No difficult net code required and scaling to as many players as we want. Obviously, we would probably want to add login authentication, maybe some dimensions so we could have different instances of the world going at the same time, and, and definitely a bit more on the front end. But we can do all of that with planetary processing and a bit of time. For now, we've got the fundamentals of how to set up a game, move entities, and make them interact. And those are really the core principles that you'll need for any game. So to get started on your own game, go to planetaryprocessing.io. You'll find more quick start guides for all of our supported game engines in our documentation. 
Please join the Discord as well at discord.gg slash planetary processing, where we'll be happy to help you get started on your multiplayer game. Thanks everyone for watching and good luck with your projects.